Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, for your Sunday series, it will be a clan war between the Falpal clan and FXB, which stands for Formless Sloth? Bear, bear Sloths? Formless Bear Sloths. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. Top right-hand corner, purple Protoss player, hailing from the Falcon Paladin clan, it is Ellie Korn. In the bottom left-hand corner of the map, it is the pink Protoss player, Draz, from Formless Bear Sloths. Now, <laughs> apparently Duddles is watching, Kithin's watching. Good thing this isn't a mirror matchup. This pink versus purple thing would be very confusing otherwise. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely that. Oh, Draz going for the cannon rush against Ellie Korn here. Now, these two organizations are basically diamond to platinum to gold level. There's nobody here who's master. There's nobody here who's grandmaster. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alchemy, for doing some casting for me here. Bottom right corner. There is no bottom right corner. Oh, is he making fun of me because I do that sometimes? I mix up my corners. Ah, bottom left. No, he did that <laughs> on accident. Whoa, Ellie's pulling all the boys here. Do you see this? You do see this. All right, so pulling the boys to take down the pylon. You really... Do you need this many? I don't know if you need this many. The more important thing, though, is to kill this probe. If you can kill this probe, you're going to have a better time. Wow, this is a lot of commitment. Okay, cannons. Cannons, higher priority. Cannons are higher priority than pylons, and probes are higher priority than anything else right now. That probe pull. Yeah, get it. Get this one. You guys, get this one. Yeah, it's not powered, but that's okay. Losing so much mining time. Yes, but also not dying to cannon rush. So that's pretty good. Oh, more, more well, pylon. Py Actually, that's Ellie's, and that's a zealot. Okay. Remember that Observer Chat shows up on replays. Very true, calls Duddles. Where are you going? There's nothing. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> all right. I guess all of the probes are necessary to kill this pylon. The Zealot can't even get in to help with this. That's how funny this is. Okay, well, now the probe's down. So the cannon rush is over. Hey, Falcon, says Alchemy. Yes, 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 yes. Hello. <laughs> But recovering nicely back home is Draz. He failed to kill his opponent with the cannon rush, but I think Ellie overreacted to the level enough that uh, Draz is going to be okay. It is 21 to 16 harvesters. Ellie's technically up here, but gateways are not even done yet for Draz. He's going double gas and not expanding out of this either. He wants to go for a one base follow up, trying to finish this thing early. A uh, uh, little bit supply blocked here. Is Ellie going for a cybernetics core? Does not have the money to expand. Getting that second gas up himself as well. So maybe, maybe he's not planning on expanding. Maybe he wants to do a one base attack follow-up too. Hmm, it's kind of like me. When I get bunker rushed, I will baneling bust you on the other side of the map. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to macro out of it. I'm not going to try to tech up to anything. I'm just going to go baneling bust with slow banelings. And hope you don't have enough to stop me on the other end. And if you do, maybe I'll set up a contain. But I'm not letting you do whatever you want after you cheese me. You must be punished. Uh, you must at least have an attempted punishment put upon you here, I suppose. What is this stuff? Gateway, gateway. Wow! So, five gate play here from Draz on the follow-up. Ellie's scouting probe saw this whole darn thing. He saw all the gateways. He saw the forge. He saw the lack of an expansion. And now he's got to be ready for this thing. Ellie, I believe in you as a representative of the Falcon Paladin clan, which you can join by joining the Discord server. There's a link in the description. If you come on the Discord server, there will be somebody there. Well, depending on the time of day, if it's like middle of the night US time, probably nobody will be there. But otherwise, go there. Somebody will be able to get you into the clan by logging on to StarCraft 2 at the same time that you are and sending you an invite. And then you can rock the Foul Pal tag there. You can have the spinning... Where is the spinning logo? Oh, there's a spinning logo of my logo there. But, um, it's not up for some reason? I don't know. Anyway, Ellie is going for a Stargate follow-up here, which is interesting. Uh, if your opponent's going for a lot of stalkers... Oh, it's zealots? Okay, uh, if we throw... There's a shield battery here. If we threw a cannon up, I'd feel a little bit better about this. But shield battery... With Zealous to hold, and there is a cannon. I think Ellie's going to be able to hold this counter all in that Draz is working on right now. Also, Draz is supply blocked. You really got to avoid doing that. Probes and pylons. Probes and pylons is something Day 9 taught me many, many years ago, which translates to the other races quite nicely, too. But you know what I mean. 
Yeah, that cannon's gonna finish, and this shield battery is so, so important. There's a hole between the gate and the pylon. Yeah, but so what? Oh, that stalker is stuck. <laughs> I don't know about this, guys! Oh, even healing up the gateway! Nope. Nope, sorry, sorry, Zealots, you're getting nothing, nothing done here at all. Twilight Council here from Draz. An expansion by Ellie would be amazing right about now, and he's gonna do it. I, be I believe him. I believe he's gonna do it. He is throwing up an oracle, which would be just game ending on Draz's end here. If an oracle showed up in his mineral line, he'd be dead. So, hmm, we'll see. We'll see if this oracle can get anything done. This oracle's name is the Honorable Learned Hand. Greatly admired by many on Earth and ire for his brilliant mind, the Protoss took pity on the Honorable Learned Hand upon his rejection from appointment to the Supreme Court. They reincarnated him as an oracle, where he serves justice in the form of pulsar beams. Uh, he's gonna get some stuff done, man. There is nothing down here that can shoot up. Are there literally no stalkers? <laughs> for Draz, Draz. Okay, well. Uh, this mineral line can use a hand, says the Oracle. <laughs> Ah, uh, Draz isn't even running. He knows. He doesn't have warp gate. He can't warp in stalkers to deal with this. He's trying to get cannons up. Oh my gosh, this oracle using energy on depth ran out of energy. Oh, and the... <laughs> and the reverse cannon rush from Ellie is going to knock down this expansion from Draz. While Ellie's expanding way the heck up here for reasons unbeknownst, he really could safely expand here if he wanted. Is he stuck in... S he's really worried about this Oracle coming back, which is fair, but he's going to lose his natural base too. Oh, Draz. Oh, Draz. Alright, well, I think that's game. I think at this point, uh, if you just focus down... But now oh, we're going after the Zealots, which is not going to work out as well. I mean, also, they're not getting surrounds either. Florence. <laughs> There we go. Getting that surround. Kind of trying to take down the pylon instead of killing the cannons. Are these cannons going to win? Oh, Pulsar Beam joins the party. <laughs> Andres calls the GG's 18 kill Oracle. Ellie is your winner in this clan war in game number one. What an exciting open this has been. Wow. Bowsers, Bowsers. Okay. Uh, um, um, the job. I don't even know where we're gonna go from here. I've heard good things about these replays. I did not realize it would be as action-packed in game number one, right off the bat. But it sure was. It sure was. The cannon rush that was shut down. Uh, I mean, not as super efficiently by Ellie. Uh, and to a lot of zealots here from Draz, which then further get shut down thanks to shield, battery, and cannon and wall, and then a reverse cannon rush on the other side, and then an oracle. Amazing stuff. All right, game two coming up. I'm not actually sure about the format here, but we'll figure that out. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so it very much looks like the winner just keeps going until one man is left standing. Here on Parasite, the latter edition, it's going to be game two between Andy Man and Ellie Korn. Top left-hand corner, we have the teal Protoss player, Andy Man. And in the bottom right-hand corner, it is the purple Protoss player, Ellie Korn. Technically, Andy Man's not part of FXB. Formalist bear slots. Does that make him a mercenary? Auto disqualification, we win, says Fat Man. All right, I, these guys are fun. These guys are fun little co-commentators here. I guess you can read them as well as I can. Oh, Casey Casey says he's got dual citizenship. Okay, that's fine. Both players are sending probes out real, real early in the process, but is anybody going for a... Oh, there we go. Ellie's going for the cannon rush this time. He says, I'm not going to be a victim. This time I will be the instigator. We got him at a private military cooperation corporation, so yes, it is a mercenary. Strong and independent, says <laughs> Kiffin. Oh, you guys are killing me. You guys are really good at this stuff. You should join me for a co-cast sometime. It'll just be five of us sitting in a room. That'd be amazing. All right, so Andy Man comes in, sees the forge immediately, and says, this probe needs to die. Or it could just sit in the mineral line where it's easily surrounded. Okay, well, uh, bye. That, I mean, you don't even really have to kill this at this point because Ellie has to send another probe up to even put a cannon. Oh, he has one. Oh, he has one in the in the in the shade here. He's gonna be scouted. Oh, he barely. Oh, he saw it. That was amazing. Okay, so unpowered. Oh, it's another pylon. 
Man, now who's losing mining time, huh? It's Andy Man is who it is. Dude, probe, why do you keep going? <laughs> Look, if you're trying to keep a probe alive, do not go into the mineral line of your opponent. Meanwhile, Andy Man apparently has a probe of his own. What a series, says Casey Casey. You're Casey Casey Casey. That is what his name is. Casey Casey. All right, I think Andy Man has this. I really don't see Ellie recovering from an entirely failed cannon rush into someone who has already got a cybernetics core out. Cyber core just starting for Ellie here. If we push some stalkers across the map, it's going to be a hard time to hold. Uh, let's see. After the BM, elite two minute. Good luck. Have fun, Strat. The plan to cheese. Amen. And there's a dude. Look, it's a dude with a huge mouth from Trumpet. Okay. This probe could maybe throw up a proxy pylon. That would be interesting. If you throw up a pylon and a gateway so you can get fast warp-ins, and then he just warped in right inside the main base. It's basically a nidus, except you have to hide it for a long time before you can make use of it, which makes it a little bit harder to do, which is why you don't see it as much as you do see a nidus at the higher level of plays. Anyway, okay, uh, expansion on the way here from Ellie. I really like that a lot from him. Think not of what was lost, but what was gained, thinking face. Got a Stalker moving out from Andy Man, and any Stalkers on the way? It's a Zealot. I really like to see a Stalker from you, Ellie, right now. Just just make one. You have enough of the resources. Well, now you don't. Uh, he is throwing up some shield batteries, which is decent against Zealot attacks. Blizzard, we still need that amount. Healed stat on batteries and medevacs. Amen, we do. That would be great. Oh, it's a cannon and a shield battery. All right, so Stalker needs to kill one of these things. I mean, if the Zealot's absorbing these shots, this is actually really good for Ellie because it gives time for the cannon to get up. And he hasn't even taken any damage yet. And there's the cannon. Amazing. Amazing from Ellie. I am loving this a lot. So his expansion's going to finish here. The Stalker's going to get literally nothing done. There's a Stalker on the way from Ellie. I mean, you're sucking all the energy off this shield battery, but it'll take you a while to do that. And the Stalker's going to be out long before then. Stalker pushing out another one from Andy Man. Recognizing the Stalkers are really, really good in PvP if you can micro well enough. Which it seems like any man is confident enough in his abilities to do that. A Chrono Boost on this gateway would be pretty fantastical. Doesn't really matter though. Okay, Stalker, get... <laughs> Zealot's like, no! I must hold the door! And there it is! Alright, first shot and a Zealot hack here. Get out. You're gonna lose that battle for sure. Don't even chase him. Don't... Okay, you're gonna chase him. Guess what? Surprise number two, Stalker! Run back! Run back to the shield battery and the cannon. Ooh, two shield batteries. This aggression is not going to stand very well. I don't think for Andy Man. He's going to have a hard time with it. Does he have more stalkers coming? No, because he's expanding behind this thing. He's getting a robotics facility for them immortals, which, mmm, immortal is the key in the PvP. Robotics facility from Ellie here as well, though. Both, well, way done for Andy Man. Whereas, uh, just kind of getting started for Ellie Corn. That's okay. His expansion is done faster. He is up in worker count, 30 to 29. I feel like he should be more up in worker count here. Any man is way oversaturated in his main base. His expansion is late because of that aggression. If cannon die, I think he thought that immortals were better than oracles. I don't know. I don't know who the he is here, but there's cannon in the mineral line of the main for Ellie, which is going to be very protected. Against oracles, which are not on the way, mind you. There is not a Stargate here from Andy Man at all. Uh, Stalker's here to harass our little cleaning bot, just saying, don't don't mind me. We're just, uh, I'm just cleaning. You're not cleaning, you're just sitting there. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's so cute. It's got a little brush brush animation. Oh my goodness, that's incredible stuff. All right, Stalker there from Andy Man. This probe could still do some nefarious things. Ooh, expanding to the top right there is Andy Man. I'm surprised that Andy Man took the fifth base as his natural. No, this is his natural. Zella walked all the way up here from Ellie. It's gonna get killed by everything, though. Getting nothing down. Observer out for Andy Man. Getting some scouting on in here, too. A cannon inside the natural mineral line would not be bad if you're worried about oracles, which apparently you are. You should protect your natural base as well. And actually, this is a very wide open target for oracles, too. That one probe still hasn't done anything. Very true. You are correct. Correct Mundo alchemy. All right, a mortal war is begun. One to one. Another one on the way for Andy Man. Ellie Korn is not working on another one. He's making an observer here. Ninja probe. I'm disappointed in you. Oh, accidentally gets spotted. No. Oh, now he is. Okay, so even warping and buildings don't have a big view radius, but uh, it's big enough. It's big enough to see that probe, which Ellie is not noticing. It's like a T-Rex. If you don't move, 
it won't see you. Stalker's checking for proxy bases all over the place because that's what he's doing. It's a guilty conscience is what it is. Uh, if, right, if you're taking a ninja expand somewhere, you're suddenly paranoid that someone else is going to do it to you. It's kind of fun. But no, no, Ellie's playing this pretty straight up at this stage of the game. It's 45 to 42 harvesters. Anyman's been able to keep up just fine in worker count despite that late natural base. Probe in here for Anyman's... Oh, that's the same probe. He's going to die to this cannon, though. Probe. Wait, no, he's not. Look at him scouting like a boss. Oh, what? Oh, wrong way. Boinked. Boink, boink, boink. Oh, we've got a, a Drax quote from Guardians of the Galaxy. And more and more immortals. Okay, it's going to be immortal versus immortal here. Three versus two. Andy Man has the lead there. It's nine stalkers versus four. I think Andy Man in a straight up traditional stalker immortal fight. It's going to be Andy Man. That observer for elk. Where is it? Right here. It is well placed. That is very true. Uh, it is sitting here seeing everything that comes out of that ramp. Watching what comes out of the robotics facility as well. Oh, shoot! Coming in the back way, though. The Stalkers are here. That, that is not an Artosis pylon. Kind of is. Sort of a bit of one here. Okay, two Immortals versus two Immortals. This is going to be very interesting. Zealots on the party, too. Guardian shield up for both of these players. Sentry is getting focused down. Another Immortal shows up for Andy Man, but it's alone. Alone Immortal is a terrible thing in the world. And it looks like Ellie managed to hold this thing. Well done. Well played, indeed. These Zealots do not have charge. They're working on it, but they don't have it yet. And Andyman is forced to retreat. Third base warping in for Ellie. Third base I've been done for a while now for Andyman. So a pylon here would be great. He is. Is Elk, <laughs> is Elk gonna get the all kill? <laughs> I don't know. So third base here instead of down here or over here is what they're pinging. I don't know entirely why. But again, this is not the highest level of StarCraft II you could ever hope to imagine. It's not. It's fun. It's really fun stuff. And I wish more people watch these things, but if you're here, you clicked. And you enjoy this stuff. To be fair, Andy Man hasn't laddered in two seasons at least. Oof, alright. Andy Man knows how to play the game, but is not really up to date on the things. He knows that Immortals and Stalkers are good. And War Prisms. He knows to take crazy expansions, too. Alchemy's... Who's going Void Ray? Oh, Ellie's going Void Ray here. Which? I don't know, man. Stalker count for Andy Man is only four. Storm's on the way. Storm is really good against Void Rays if they sit in it. And they're pretty slow. It's hard for them to get out of it. If we're being honest here. So, going to be Charge Lot, Void Ray Immortal, plus two ground weapons on the way for Ellie, whereas we are still at plus one for Andy Man with no plus two to be spotted here. Andy Man is highly saturating his main base. He should transfer some of those probes to his sneaky, sneaky third. It'd be real nice if you accidentally wandered past this third and killed it, Zealots, but you're not going to, are you? Oh, you're going to find these probes, though. Get them! Get the probes! There we go. Oh, 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 and they're gonna lead him. No probes! Ooh, the probes had a second thought there, but where were they going? Yes! Yes, he figured it out! Press F to pay respects to this third base. This is the problem with having sneaky bases. No, the assimilator is the worst possible target for you guys. Absolute 100% worst, and now you killed nothing. These probes are all still alive. Oh, wait, maybe we can get a couple more. All right, fine. Target firing down these dudes and then finally getting cleaned up by most of the army for Andy Man. So, but it has been discovered is the main point here. Are you still making immortals? Kind of. Are these, can these guys even get out? I think they can because he has immortals on his front. I've wondered why assimilators have 900 HP and the gas structures only have 500. It's a great question. Why do assimilators get that buff? The deep questions being asked by alchemy here. All right, what are we doing? Uh, four Immortals, four Ellie. Void Ray count is currently one, with another one on the way. No wonder Protoss needs a nerf. <laughs> uh, XD, Templar Archives on the way here from Ellie too. And just kind of getting up a big scary Protoss army, as Fatty likes to say, who is involved in the clan war. He is part of the Fal Pal clan. All right, uh, Void Ray, Void Ray. Forge coming up here, too, with ground armor level two. So plus two attack is done, plus one armor is done. He's ahead. One full upgrade on both of those is Ellie. In a straight-up fight, I kind of feel like it's going to be a good thing. Clicks link to BBC Nature. 
What? <laughs> what are you even talking about? I don't know. Zealots are running for this third base. The Observer sees it. Reaction time is pretty good for Andy Man, but Zealots with speed are pretty fast. Is he going to recall? I thought I heard a recall sound. Oh, he recalled to this base. So he could... Wait, what? Why not just recall to this base? Was it an accident? Oh, that is Bob... That is uh, Bob, to uh, Bob Toss is what that is. All right, so more of these probes going down. It's 63 to 53 harvesters, mostly thanks to the 15 probes that have been killed by Ellie. Here. Zealots are trying to take down the Nexus by themselves, but they're just not even going to get through the shields there. And are all going to get cleaned up, no big deal. It is 137 to 123 supply. Seven High Templar just got warped in from Ellie. Is he going Archons? I cry every time. Oh, the memes. Fourth base here for Ellie. Fourth base done for Andy Man. We are still looking at mostly Gateway here with Twilight Council. Out of Andy Man and this one robotics facility he's been using to churn out Immortals. So the Immortal count is 6 to 4. So Ellie Corton has more Immortals and he has 4 Void Rays against 8 Stalkers. There are 8 High Templar in Andy Man's army, which means Storm is going to be really interesting here. Alright, so both players decided to attack at the same time, which happens really more than it should, I feel like. I mean, it's not like... It's just blind. It's blind attacking, and it happens to be at the same time that their opponent is moving out at the same time, too. Ooh, it is going to be a fleet beacon from Ellie. Is he going carrier? That'd be amazing. Fifth base on the way from Andy Man. If I'm not being attacked, might as well expand my face off here. These High Templar have Storm, and they have enough for Storm here, too. This is going to be very interesting very, very shortly. All right, so third base in a lot of trouble here versus Andy Man's army. There are two carriers in production for Ellie. He has to win this fight, though, to get there is the problem. So third base done. Zealots getting on top of here. Void Rays trying to burn down stuff. Good storms. The blanket storms and the feedbacks. Holy cannoli here. More Void Rays showing up. Are there enough stalkers to clear these dudes out? I am not convinced there are, especially not with prismatic alignment. And wow, loses a base. But at the same time, wipes out Andy Man's army here. And the counterattack of Void Rays is possibly on a slow warp in here of Zealots. Chad Rays, win the day, says Alchemy. So loses his third base, but wipes out the army. Also, he's making carriers. Also, Andy Man's having a hard time rebuilding his army. Sitting on 1,900 and 400 in the resources column. He basically has eight stalkers to his name. So eight stalkers here versus a bunch of Void Rays. Five Void Rays in this part of the country. Are we Chrono boosting up these, uh, these guys, these carriers? No, no, I don't believe we are. Bullying all those queens. Zealots wandering up to Animan's base, killing more of these probes, man. If you could slow down your opponent's economy at all, you're gonna have a good time. There's the recall, but all the probes are already dead. Oh, again, the upgrades really playing a big part. 3 2 1 versus a plus 2 attack for Animan, and that's it. Rip a simulator. A simulator that. Oh, and he attacked the third base of Animan at the same time. Alright, looking good. Looking really, really good. More zealots. Just want we just want to kill probes. We're not really interested in attacking anything else. If we can keep you from uh, mining anything, that'd be actually really ideal. A lot of zealots have died for Ellie, though, man. It is 38 have gone down, but 33 probes have died. The 68 to 53 carriers going to be a problem for Andy Man. His stalker count is currently 18. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's not going to be a problem here. More zealots doing stuff. More zealots doing stuff. The income here is really favoring Ellie. 2,000 to 1,000 on that minerals per minute number. Zealots trying to get some damage done on this Nexus before they all die. And they are going to get whole damage. They're not going to take it down. But they do bring it down to about 500 HP. Yep, about 500 HP there, which is not where you want your base to be. More zealots moving out. Ellie's playing this like a mech Terran player. He's sending out runbys in the form of zealots instead of hellions. And then he's just making a huge, scary army back home that he will eventually move out with. It just takes a long time to build it up, is the idea. Where are his carriers, even? Gonna plug Andyman real quick, since he agreed to do this last minute. Fair enough, Duddles. You may plug. Oh, the Zealots finished off the fourth. He runs Mitosis Gaming and casts Proxy Tempest Platinum Diamond Tournaments every Tuesday. And he hates Zealots. I hate Zealots. <laughs> It's a PvP! It's a mirror match! You can't complain about Zealots. Oh, he's complaining about Zealots. Let me tell you that. Remove Zealots, says Casey. Look at these guys! They're just, they are the Zerglings of this match. They're just running and he's making a new custom map that is a Micro King of the Hill capture the point kind of a thing. 
Look at him drag the army over here to this and then just go into the main base and warp into and force units to respond there as well. This is pretty good stuff out of Ellie. I like it. Trying to sacrifice and keep the warp prism alive. No. Not going to happen. Carriers are here. Mothership on the way because why not at this stage of the game? It is 148 to 137. It is close. This 18 stalker count is really nice out of Andy Man. Are these guys still here? Still some zealots, man. Voidry's out for Andy Man now, too. Which is good news. But if that mothership comes out, Phoenix is a little late. This late in the game is confusing. Maybe it's a scouting Phoenix. Another expansion for Ellie. One, two, three, four, five, six. More of a traditional expansion pattern here for this guy. But here comes our stalker, uh, High Templar, Void Ray Ball out of Andy Man. Again, I think upgrades are a massive play here. Although the air units, they got upgrades too. They have plus two attack and plus two shield. Ooh, Phoenix dies. Andy Man says, Carrier, what? It's a fair question, dude. It is a fair question. What's the hotkey for upgrade in the WCS interface? I don't know, but it's G here. Ta-da! It's at the bottom, or in the, they're in the WCS interface watching this. I am in Servant Obs. If you like this replay interface, I'll send it to you. Send me an email. <laughs> Falconpaladin at gmail.com. All right, so we are just, we're doing the dance. We're doing the lobby dance where nobody feels really comfortable about engaging here. Ellie Korn's been really passive other than his zealot run buys throughout this game and the attempted, I guess, and the attempted cannon rush at the beginning. That was pretty aggressive. Altai 4 activates Super Starcraft mode. We already reported him. <laughs> for, yeah. All right, Ellie's going for a seventh base, which is probably going to die. Trumpet has left the game with a colon. So you know what's real. War Prison trying to sneak on into this space. No static defense at all for... Well, there's a cannon here now. Just kidding. There are cannons in different places, which is nice. 186 to 160 supply. I think this might be the impetus. Oh, the storm drop, though. It's a Taldarim mothership. It is a Taldarim mothership. These skins, man. Them are pretty, pretty skins. Look at Ted in the bottom left. Is this Ted? Oh, this is Ted the Zealot. They told me to kill this base by myself, and I'm going to do it. There's a cannon warping in on the other side of the base. I don't know that it's there, though, is the thing. What a play. Yeah, that mothership is amazing. Ted is a man, says Kiffin. He's a man. Why are you going this way? What is over here, Ellie? Ellie? Okay, maybe you thought this base was replanted. Fine, but you don't have to send your whole army to scout it. Send a zealot up to see. That's all you got to do. Oh, cannon here has... Is that Ted? Well, Ted's dead. Ted is dead. Also, warp prism in range of that cannon. Don't do that. Ted is dead. Yes, trying to replant this fourth base is any man, but the entirety of Ellie Korn's army is present, and that sucker gets canceled real, real fast. Counterattack! Of Stalkers with plus two attack. Marching on into the seventh base location. Cannon with shield battery is good. But Cannon with shield battery is not that good. Not against 18 Stalkers, as it turns out. Are we base racing this thing? Another base on the way for any man Nope, done. Absolutely done. Dude, just kill his... You can win the base race. Dude, it's Stalkers versus Carrier Void Ray Zealot. Yeah! Now he's going. Now he's going for that base race. If you could recall everything except the Mothership, then use the Mothership to recall back. No, but it shares a cooldown. The recall on the Nexus and the recall on the Mothership share a cooldown. I believe I saw at one point. Stalker's taken down another base of Ellie. We've got Void Race out here, too. We are base racing for game number two, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a base race. I don't know really what else to say at this point. There is very little resistance going on from anybody. As far as back home goes, I mean, everybody's army is on the other side of the map here. Nexus down. All the production facilities for Andy Man are out. He has a ton of money, but he's incredibly supply blocked. And he currently has uh, six warp gates somehow. Oh, well, I guess a lot of them are down here too. A lot of them are down here. Sneaky assimilator left behind. Sometimes in the base race scenario, Ellie forgets about assimilators. If you remember from a game I played against him uh, about a week or so ago. All right, so base toast. This base is going to be toast. Does he know this is here? He does not, but he does very shortly, and he finds it. Okay, so these stalkers are not... They've got to be moving, man. If you're going to base race... And there's a base up here now for Ellie. All right, so now you're being revealed. 
Andy Man. Oh, except he brought in a Nexus in the very bottom of the map. I just who wins in this engagement? Well, it's 115 to 171 supply. Ugh. I don't know, Andy Man. I do love the Void Rays. I'm a big fan of them. I love the High Templar with the Storm, too. It's like a jillion bases along the left. Look at this. Look at Ellie throwing up Nexuses everywhere while doing a base race. Very, very on top of things is Mr. Corn. All right, Nexus down. You might think that's the final Nexus for Ellie, but by golly, it is not. The enemy know our fury. All right, backside attack. Oh, he's storming the Void Rays. Doing pretty good with that there, but the Void Rays are now attacking. There we go, attacking the mothership directly. Carriers are remaining, but carriers are so good. The Blanket Storms, and that's your good game. Good game out of Andy Man, and Ellie Corn is your winner. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a huge, huge battle to come down with there for the final bits. 36,000 resources lost for Andy Man. 26 for Ellie Corn. Any carriers die? No, no carriers died for him. His mothership obviously was focused down, but that was it. 52 stalkers died for Andy Man. 93 probes went down to 50 probes. A lot of those probes were early, too. Good job by Ellie. All right. Game three. We're going to check that one out. Stay with me. All right, an observer has joined game number three from formless sloth bears. Bear sloths. Bear sloths. Man, made up words are hard to remember sometimes. Top right-hand corner, Red Zerg player Kithin, who we saw comment during the previous game, or the first one maybe. And in the bottom left-hand corner, it is the blue Protoss player, Ellie Korn. Why is he blue? <laughs> Great question. We have our mech zergs here with their little uh, blades of energy they're using to harvest with. I don't know, it's always so distracting, It's because it's so different. It looks so, so different in this early stage of the game. Is it going to be? Okay, so one gate here from Ellie. He's scouting with his probe. You should always do this. Protoss players, you should always scout with that first probe. Good enough for Showtime. Good enough for Ellie here. It's good enough for you. The Archon has the Orbity thingies. Uh, yes, I don't know what you're talking about exactly. And there's the hatch first out of Kithin at about 17 supply. We're going to see an extractor. And then a pool is just a blind open here. He's feeling very confident that Ellie's not going to cheese him, which is weird because he just saw Ellie cheese in games one and two. Well, he was the recipient of cheese in game one, but then he cheesed later. I think that counts. And then it's going to be a 16 or a 17. It's going to be a 16, but it could have been a 17 spawning pool. He had enough resources for it. All right, so extractor there. Time to go ahead and saturate that thing. Go for it. Go for it, Kithin. Kithin? Kithin, saturate. Uh, okay, he was really worried about that probe. Now he's going to saturate the gas. There we go. Excellent. Cybernetics core. No, double gateway and cyber core before expansion here from Ellie. The drones have the cool new attack sound, too. Yes, we heard that. At least I hope we did. I think the volume is high enough that you should be able to hear that anyway. Hmm. So while we're a bit slow, quick plug for the new Falcon Paladin Hour Global Open. Yes, I know it's a lot of words. But uh, it's basically replacing the Gauntlet Global Open. It's going to be every 6 p.m. Eastern on Sundays. Not today. Starting next week. We need a week to get things kind of situated and ready to go. But it's still going to be cast by me and by Just Jordan. Still going to get the high-level players here that you know and love from the Gauntlet. And we will be partnered with Macharino, which is something people have been asking for for a while. So that is definitely going to happen. Uh, with extra donations, we will cast games from replay at the end of the gauntlet, which is pretty fun stuff. And it's going to be held on Just Jordan's Twitch stream, which is X, Just X, Jordan X, after Twitch.tv. There will be a link in the description to that. So Falcon Paladin Hour Global Open, sponsored by the Falcon Paladin Hour, a podcast with me and an Australian named Somicron. You can find it anywhere fine podcasts are distributed for free. Talk about video games, StarCraft, stuff like Spider-Man, movies, Infinity War... All sorts of great and interesting stuff for your ears on your commute or while you're mowing the lawn or you're on a bus. That's where I like to listen to my podcasts. Wow, two for one. Two plugs at the same time there. Is anybody doing anything? I guess it is a Stargate here with a Phoenix for Ellie. These supply blocks, unfortunately, ugh, this is a hard place to get supply block at 31 supply. I can tell you that much. Adept coming in for the harass, but there are lings on the edge of the creep and a queen. Adept really should not be able to accomplish anything here. It's only the one. I guess it's two, though. 
You don't see two adapt that much anymore, but that's what you can do with the double gateway opening. Is the two adapt. Uh, Lings, you can respond now. And... Alright, so you're gonna kill a... Pro, a, a drone. So that's gonna be it. You're, both your adepts are going to die here. The <laughs> Phoenix's name is Andrew. I don't name Phoenix. How come you know that? Oh, it is gonna be an Oracle, though. Alright, so Oracle's name is going to be Scout. A double-jumping slugger from the mean streets of Boston, the Scout heard he could make big money as a mercenary for man. Co. Cool. However, Scout signed the wrong paperwork for the wrong military program, ending up as a Reaper instead. Now he is still low health. Fast flanker that jumps really well, but in a world... Oh, that's a Reaper name. Just kidding. Ah, uh, this is actually Amelia. <laughs> Amelia! The Oracle! Pushing on out here, gonna try to get some stuff done. There's a Spore Crawler at the main. The natural base has a couple queens. And a Spore Crawler, almost. And the third base doesn't have any drones to worry about. Dang. I, I was reading the, the wrong list. How did I even do that? I don't know. All right, so Oracle Phoenix play here, which is beautiful. It is something I first saw from Showtime on my channel, but a lot of Protoss do it now. You come in, you lift up the queen, you kill the drones while the queen's not stabbing away at your Oracle. It's just the Spore Crawler, which Spore Crawler Queen is basically what you need to shove the Oracle away. If you don't have one of those pieces of the puzzle, you're in trouble. There's the lift. Here's the Oracle. Taking some serious shots, though. One, two... Free and dead. Okay, maybe that's not as good. Not as good. Oh, left and then dead too. I don't know. I don't think that was worth it. That was four pro four drones down for an oracle and a phoenix. Going hydro list again, doing go go double upgrades here. It looks like Kithin is running with a hydro ling bane strategy here, although he doesn't have a bane ling nest yet. <laughs> Rip Henry. 2.0. Still hasn't overmade things here. He's got five queens, just a handful of zerglings here. He's droning his face off. I'm trying to keep up with the chrono boost abilities that Protoss are running with here. It is 29 to 34 harvesters. He's got more probes, though, does Ellie. That's very true. That's exactly what I just said. How did you know that? How did you know that, Trumpet? It is a legitimate question, if you ask me. Templar Archives on the way. Storm is so very, very important if you're dealing with this Hydra play. That Kithin is going for here. There's not a Roach Warren or a Baneling Nest. It's like straight up Ling Hydra, which I don't know. If you could dodge well, you get up here before the storm is ready to go. I think you just win. We'll see. This might just be a situation where a big old Hydra attack just wins. That is part of the ZVP meta these days. Is Hydras show up with range and they just pick this whole thing apart. You don't really have storm yet. You only have gateway units, and immortals are pretty bad in that situation too, and then you die. So we'll see. We'll see if that's what Ellie is going for. Or rather, Kithin is going for Warp Prism. Ooh, a Storm Drop. Feedback Drop. <laughs> Dang it. Alchemy, what are you talking about? What you talking about, fool? I mean, this could be pretty bad if he stormed especially the natural base, but the third base isn't really saturated to where it'd be worth it yet, I don't think. Oh, Archon drop. Just kidding. He wasn't even getting Storm. Dude, pay attention to the production tab. <gasps> Aspire. What? Hydratling Corruptor? Sure. That sounds like what we're going for here. But this l l queen. All right, Archons are here. Lings are present. They're not. No, they're stuck behind the queen. Uh, hit, 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 hit. And then you pick up and save. Then you pick up and say, that's that's the way. Oh, these lings. Oh, this is so disgusting. So disgusting here. Oh, War Prism's in trouble, though. Don't lose the War Prism! That is an oof, indeed, alchemy. Super oof. <laughs> oh, that is an F situation, to be sure. Ugh. That was doing really well until they died. Reminds me of... The Futurama episode, 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 where Bender meets God, and Bender's like, you know, I was God once. And God says, yes, I know, you're doing very well, until everyone died. Look at these mech hydralisks! Wow! They look... They have knives for hands! <laughs> they kind of look like Transformers a little bit. Oh, that is so weird. That is so, so weird. Okay, if we see Colossus, Colossus would be a pretty good answer here. 
Does he know about the Hydras, though? The answer is... He saw it coming up. Saw it coming up. So, hmm. Zealot attacks, moving out. This is the traditional play for Ellie into the mid to late game and sending Zealots all over the place to cause problems for the enemy. Now, these three Zealots, they do not have any attack upgrades at all. The Lings do have plus one attack, which is going to help them immensely. And it is going to be extended Thermal Lance for Ellie here. All right, so if we see Colossus versus the Hydra, the Hydra are going to have a bad day, 100%. Oh, get that one too. Not going to get that one too. All right, Zerglings with plus one attack with pretty good numbers. Actually finished that off quite nicely. Plus one attack is really great against gateway units. That was actually back in the day when the Foregate was a thing back in Wings of Liberty and it was wrecking me all the time. The guide that I watched from HD StarCraft, that's how old this is, that's how old this story is, was like, all right, get your Zerglings, get plus one attack, wall up here behind two bases, get some evolution chambers and spine crawlers and queens and you'll be fine and you can hold it. And he was right. He was absolutely right. Colossus Inferior, Disruptor Superior. Maybe. But Disruptor Control is harder in these lower levels than it is uh, than the Colossus is. Creep Tumors? There are a lot of tumors for how the creep spread is right now. He needs to push. He needs to push this creep on out. What is he doing? He's making more Hydras. He's working on Hives, getting upgrades, which is beautiful from him. Wasted Queen Energy. I don't know if it is. I am not convinced if it is Wasted Queen Energy at all. Oracle trying to sneak on up. But there are two Spore Crawlers and a Queen here. I guess maybe a Revelation would be not bad. Get it. Pick off the drone before it turns into a base. Not going to do it. Oh, hey, female Carrick. Oh, tried. Tried so hard to get that. Ooh. Yeah, that Hydra skin, though. Oh, and look at the Overseers, too, with their green eyes. I'm going to make this. As soon as that drops off, I'm going to make this, I think, my thumbnail for the cast. Hydra beats nothing, says Trumpet. Well, we'll see. We'll see if it does or not. And the upgrades are good. Got the plus one. He's working on the plus one armor. He's getting muscular augments. He's getting uh, centrifugal hooks for Banelings to use. So Hydra, Ling, Bane, possibly Corruptor. We could see Hive is done. Broodlord would be very interesting. If you went 10 minute Broodlord here, I would be a fan. I absolutely would. So maybe Colossus here. How many Colossus do we have, Ellie? The answer is the one. We have the one now. There he is. Ooh, pretty nice. Stop with the sets. What are you talking about? Draz is upset about something. I don't know what it is. All right, so Banelings don't have speed yet. They are s Look at him refuse to attack off the edge of the creep. That's the funny thing. He could be across the map at this point if his creep spread was a little bit better, but when you're playing... Well, his APM's 181 right now. I don't know. Could be better. That's all I'm saying. Kithin, one, two, three, four, fifth base. Fifth base done. That's just English and Chinese. What is that? guys are weird. I love ya. And you guys are so very, very weird. Got vipers. Whoa! Okay, this brings it up. This brings it up. When you have viper play... You're missing some... <laughs> uh, it would make sense. This is Casey. Zealots pushing out. They've got the plus one, plus one now. A little bit scarier, but still there are Zerglings here. Within striking distance of you getting on that creep. And then you die, is the thing. This Zergling actually pushing out. I can't believe how defensively Kithin has been playing here. He's had some times where he can do some stuff. Checking for that base, checking for this base. Zergling does have the plus two attack. Ooh! Look at that. That's not even blood. It's like mercury that comes out of the Zergling. All right, Zealots heading up and already moving this way because the Overlord was scouting the whole thing the whole time. Are these Zealots who can't get past these rocks? Don't explode on them! Don't do it! Okay, only a couple Banelings exploded. That's okay. That is just fine. Hydra, it is a Greater Spire. Broodlords would be problematic for Ellie. I think with 83 Creep Tumors, you control the whole map. Yeah, but instead you just have clumps of Creep Tumors that aren't pushing out. At all. Dude, don't attack now. Wait for the brood lords. I like the two control groups. Oh, never mind. Everyone's all the same. I'm very confused here. Alright, so Ling's protecting this base exceptionally well here. Don't go in. Don't go in. 
Why would you go in? Okay, well, uh, I guess maybe they killed some zealots. Resources lost at this point. Going to be uh, uh, 4,200 for Kithin. And 4,600 for Ellie, so I don't know. Not too shabby. Do kite. Attack now while the Colossus can't get you. You can win this battle. You can do it. He's going to try to abduct the Colossus, but there are two of them. Creep Tumor's getting picked off here, too. Zergling's fighting, but when the Colossus... There we go! Trying to blinding cloud the Colossus? Sort of? Oh, the storms, though! Oh, <laughs> the storms! And now the Colossus with plus two attack. All right, well, uh, Kithin's making 24 hiders and 28 Zerglings, which... 20 kills on that Colossus. One of them did die. One of them was close enough to the hiders that it died. It was moved up because it was avoiding blinding cloud. And then it died. Uh, Zerglings running up to a bad rally position and then just getting absolutely massacred here. Storm on the right side. This Colossus sitting back, man. Sitting back pretty well. Trying to focus down the Colossus with the Hydras. It is the problem here. Oh, Warp Prism warping in. Zealots, the huge play. Huge play out of Ellie there. 127 to 75 supply. This is not a huge argument from Ellie, but it's going to be enough. 19 kills on this Archon. Immortal crushing through two. And yeah, these are just Panicklings. Panicklings are running in. They're trying to kill the Immortals, but the Zealots have the upgrades to deal with them. They have a plus two. Pretty fantastically. This Archon has 30 kills now? And it's just it's just not it. I mean, Kithin has the economy to do stuff. But only ha he has no, no larva at all. Two Warp Prisms. What is this madness? Says Alchemy. Great question. Great question indeed. A spore crawler trying to kill that oracle, but there is so much other stuff going on right now. Yeah, hatchery down. War prisons should be a hero unit like the mothership. You should only get one. Is that what you're saying here? And that's your good game. And Ellie wins game number three. Is he going to get the all kill? Is that what we're going to see here today? Is getting the all kill? No. No. Oh. All right, very good. Um, well played there, actually. If Kithin had waited for Brew Lords, he had the Greater Spire. He had the number of bases. He could have just thrown up 12 Brew Lords. That would have absolutely changed the entire composition of every fight from that point on. But instead, he decided to attack with Lingbane Hydra into a very well positioned army from Ellie, and that was all she wrote. So let's see if Ellie can do it again. And if he does, it'll be nice. Well, will it be nice? Am I showing my my bias here? Perhaps. I have not watched these games. They didn't tell me anything about them. But we'll be there regardless. All right. We'll be right back. Okay. It's going to be Visser versus Ellie Korn on Acid Plant. Top left-hand corner, Red Terran player. Visser, bottom right-hand corner, Blue Protoss player, Ellie Korn. Elk for all kills, says Alchemy. <laughs> If Elk wins, I have to beat every single one of you, says Duddles. That's the rules. That is definitely the rules here. Don't worry, though. I'm a pushover, says Rogoth. I'm not even sure who Rogoth is. Rogoth, who are you? You're in my clan. Hmm. I don't rightly know. All right, moment of truth from Ellie. How's this going to go? First building is... I'm going to pick my race, depending on the matchup, says Duddles. A gateway. A gateway indeed. Are you prox? Visser's going for a really fast refinery here. Into now a barracks. I thought Elk was gonna cheese. <laughs> Not cannon rushing. Hmm. However, there is a pylon up here from Ellie. What the what? Proxy Void Ray is better. Maybe it's a proxy void ray. Literally unbeatable. Maybe not against Terran. Though, I love the SCV scout out of out of this, or get down there, see what's going on, see if there's any buildings missing. A gateway here for Ellie. Now, here's the thing. If at this stage of the game, your opponent only has one pylon inside their base, it means there's one somewhere else. Man, you guys are so chatty. So, so chatty. Four gate? Maybe. It kind of looks like just a regular old four gate, yeah. Probe going to come up and see what's going on. It's going to be a one racked with not, not even done yet. If we're going to be honest with ourselves. And it is going to be a Reaper. Can this Reaper hold the day? La, la, la. Just a normal probe scout. Boom. 
this reaper's name is something. It is, oh, we already did that one. This reaper, well, the probe's down. This reaper's name is Quote. Quote is one of the few cyborgs to get into the reaper program and more machine than human at this point. Others wonder if he was actually a robot originally and his biological components were added later. Well, here he is. This pylon is up for Ellie, though. Problematically. But what are you... Is it just to distract? I'm so confused right now. The Reaper's looking for this proxy stuff, but it's not here yet. Is this straight-up Zealot pressure? Three-gate proxy Zealot pressure. Is this even a build? I'm not convinced it's a build, is the thing. The problem is, Zealots at your front door is really problematic. I think Ellie's probably just tired after playing this many games in a row. You don't do this a lot. And the Zealots are here. Well, um... I, um... I mean, the SCVs can't win this. <laughs> Elk for all kill! Where's our Reaper? Here's our Reaper! Hey guys, I'm gonna kill all you guys. I don't, I don't think you are. It's, you know how many shots it takes for a Reaper to kill a Zealot? It's like a 1500. It's, it's a billion as far as I'm concerned. The Zealots in the mineral line getting surrounded. Attack, you guys. Come on. Come on. Look at all this lost mining time here too. Another Zealot joins the party. No, Reaper, don't you die. Quote, don't you die on me. Pretty good. Pretty good micro here, keeping him alive for the most part. He is really down on HP. Combat drugs, heal him up. They are doing it. They're doing it, but other zealots are inside the mineral line here, causing some major problems. He tried to catch that, dude. This Reaper is the only thing. <laughs> Cyclones, micro. Oh, Cyclone up, though. Cyclone trying to kill. Wait, he's target firing the unbuildable plates. No! No! <laughs> That's why everyone kills their unbuildable plates. Because if you A move that way and you click on the rocks, they'll attack the rocks. Oh. <laughs> with the win um, in three, almost four minutes, just with proxy zealot stuff. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. This wasn't slow orphans because there were gateways here. I'm dumb. Anyway, um, shoot. Ended up losing no zealots, did Ellie Korn. Killed 19 SCVs, a cyclone, a couple supply depots, and a reaper with those zealots. Nine of them. Heroes. Heroes in their own right. Two kills. One kill. Five kills. One, three, eight kills on that dude. What a hero. Okay, can Ellie all kill? I don't know. Like I said, I haven't seen this. Find out with me. We'll be right back. Support in the color orange. It's going to be Duddles, top left-hand corner. From Formless... Blah, blah, blah. Holy smokes. Formless Bear Sloths. Crikey. And in the bottom right-hand corner, the Red Protoss player, Ellie Korn, from the Foul Pal Clan. What if I throw and just make it 5-0, says Duddles. Great question, dude. What if you do do that? I don't know. I mean, Ellie... <laughs> Ellie's been killing it here. Weird games, macro games, rushing games, cannon rushing games. He's just winning all of them right now. He's doing super duper well for the Falcon Paladin clan, which, I mean, if you showed up to this thing and you were in the Falcon Paladin clan, you're like, hey man, like, can, can I have a turn on the controller? Can I please? Regular gateway here, gateway here from Ellie. Zerg is his main, I think. Yeah, Duddles does main as Zerg. He's also very cheesy from what he has expressed in the Discord server is... He really hates uh, certain maps because they're so big, it's hard to effectively cheese on them. That's that's how he decides how good a map is or not. Like Darkness Sanctuary, a lot of people like that and feel like it's Zerg favored. Nah, Duddles says nah. Actually, Duddles was a guest on the Falcon Paladin Hour on the second most recent episode. So... <laughs> So if you want to check that out, again, just search the Falcon Paladin Hour on your podcast app. Apple, Android, whatever. We're also on the internet all over the place. Double gateway opening. Pretty standard build we've seen from Ellie here. Two adepts show up, try to get some stuff done. It was shut down pretty easily by the Zerg player he faced last time. The 106 Baneling build. That's actually something I've been working on against Terran. It's a three base Baneling bust, uh, which Life used to do. Life used to do this back in Heart of the Swarm before he got banned for match fixing. But he would basically say, all right, Terran meta right now is not to build a tank for a while. 
And that's what it is right now. Basically, Terra and Meta, if they're going bio, it's just it's do drops, right? Just do double Metavac drop, see what it can get done, and then start making some tanks. So I'll show up at the front door with about 15 Banelings and a flood of Zerglings and say your natural base is mine. You might be able to hold your main, maybe. But even then, it's going to be two base to one base, and then where are you going to go from there? And it's very interesting, the effect it's had here. At least at my level. Probe goes down to the drone. And some Lings moving out here. I do not feel great about these Lings moving out. There's going to be a wall. There's going to be a depths. I just, I mean, I know it's aggressive here. Is that a Baneling nest? Ooh. Ooh. No. I thought maybe it was. Yeah, he sees this. He sees what this is. Maybe he's going to try to bait the Zealot out. Hey, Zealot, come out here. Oh, it's on hold position. Good job, Bob the Zealot. Good job being on hold position. I guess maybe now you try to knock down this gateway by your lonesome. And the Adepts are out. Now we're having a problem here. Now there's a shield battery. Duddles, no! Duddles, no. Duddles, don't do it. Oh, the Adept was stuck. Tried to shade out of it. Shaded to a further corner. And then transferred there. That's hilarious, actually. That's very funny indeed. All right, so that was a waste of Zergling. Six Zerglings died for nothing. Baneling Nest on the way. He's going for that Baneling Bust. Is what he's doing. Did you see this many Lings out? It is a Baneling Bust. Ooh, they can't get through. It is a wall. It is a wall. They cannot get through, but they're going to try to knock down the Cybernetics Core. They're going to try to knock down this Pylon. Another wall comes up here for Ellie. Adept on the outside of the wall. Oh, that is a bad place to be, Adept. That is a real, real bad place to be. This shield battery is out of energy. Is anything going to die here, though? This Adept is a boss. Two kills already? Shield battery down, which is kind of nice. Uh, Adept here fighting real, real hard. Man, I think he should have waited for the Banelings. If we're going to be honest. Look at this. Look at this wall. Shield battery. Shield battery. Forge. Gateway. Banelings aren't getting through this. Duddles, no! Don't Baneling bust this! I've been in your shoes. I've tried to Baneling bust a Protoss player who's prepared for it, and it goes so very, very poorly. Well, Oracle. Oracle on the way. Oracle's name is going to be Diva, the esports defender of humanity. Diva was approached by the Terran Dominion to do propaganda films about Emperor Mengsk. After flatly refusing the offer, Diva was declared a traitor in a show trial and sent to the Oracle program. She is now uh, live streaming her first and likely last Oracle mission. Zergling still trying to do stuff, man. It's not it's not great. Two kills, 12 kills on that adept. Here come the Banes. There's only three of them though. What are you gonna do here? Alright, well, hey look, the adept is still alive and a stalker popped out. Oh Duddles. Oh Duddles. What did I tell you? What did I try to warn you about? Well. Don't 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 do the thing. I love how it's just a standard Phoenix. Oracle play here. Ling's coming home. 25 to 17 Harvesters. Duddles, you can macro out of this. You can macro out of this. You can do this thing. I totally believe in you. Here's our Oracle Diva. And there's your lift. There's your lift. Oracle gonna get some kills down. Focusing down the Oracle is the right thing to do here for the Spore Crawler. Does end up with two kills is it? Alright. I love the concept here from Ellie. It's not it's not really ex executing super duper well. As it turns out. So Phoenix dead for no reason whatsoever. Another Oracle pushing out. It's D.Va, the successor to D.Va. Roach Warren here. Everybody versus Elk. And he <laughs> will still win. Maybe. Maybe he would. Trumpet, you be a ref on it. 25 to 16 Harvesters. Two base, almost a two base here. Yeah, man, I think you just drone your face out here and win this thing, Duddles. Come on, man. Come on, Zerg. I'm rooting for Zerg over my own team. This is where my loyalties lie, apparently. Yeah, you're not getting through that wall. And Nidus would be a lot of fun, but kind of slow. Because there's not one of these uh, these layers yet. Double gas from Duddles. He's on 16 total workers. How are you double gas roaching? What is your plan? Oracle. Bam. Picks off a drone. Three of them have gone down. What? Oh, right. Mecha Queen. Mecha Queens are here. Mecha Roaches are here, too. That's kind of fun stuff. Queen, double Queen. Oracle, get out. You're alive. You're alive, Queen. Good job. Shoving that shoving that Oracle away. Yeah, another rock kill. Yes, did attack that rock there. I mean, you know the story behind the rocks, right? It used to be Protoss had this build where they just threw up three pylons at the bottom of the Zerg ramp really early, and the Zerg was stuck on one base forever, and they died. 
it was really, really good. And so they built unbuildable plates into every ladder version of every map just to stop that strategy. How's that? How's that for changing all of the stuff? Amazing. Colossus have been nerfed as well. Reapers have been nerfed as well for their performance against Zerg. Basically, a lot of the stuff that's been nerfed in StarCraft 2 was nerfed because it was really, really, really good against Zerg. Those Adepts are set up to kill a third that does not exist. Uh, yes, they're ready to go, but there's not one. True fact. Ooh, but coming on in while the Lings are away. Ah, this timing blows for Duddles. Is he going to go for Bailing Bust? I just don't. There's a Void Ray out too. Actually, that Queen was able to kill an Adept. Who knew? Who knew that was even a possibility? They do so little damage to Adepts. Adepts have so much HP. But eventually, you'll get them. And these Zerglings are... And Zergling Roach is just... The Void Ray is just the icing on the cake here for Ellie. Dude, get your Lings out. Get them out of here. Oh, Resources lost. 2,400 for Duddles. And 1,700 for Ellie. And suddenly it's 68 to 37 supply. Suddenly we're pushing out with an army. Suddenly Duddles has exactly seven roaches in his entire army. Thanks for carrying us, Elk. This is happening, says Casey. Yeah, it is. Elk is OP, man. He, oh, he's pretty good. He's beat me before, and I beat him. I think we're 1-1 all time. When is Blizz nerfing Elk? <laughs> Here we go! Void Ray's Zealot Stalker. It's not a huge army, but it's all you need. There are some roaches here, but uh, yeah. I mean, focusing down the Spore Crawler is the brilliant thing, and then you just Prismatic Alignment. And the roaches all die. No, 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 no. Focus the roaches! Get the roaches, Void Ray! You have Prismatic Alignment turned on. Well, that's okay. All the drones are dead, regardless. Yeah, the Zealots are just bravely going after that queen, recognizing the threat that it is. And Sporecrawler trying to win this battle here, too. Sporecrawler versus Void Ray. Actually, Sporecrawler going to win. Okay, kind of held. Kind of held a little bit, but guess who's here? More Zealots. Guess who's here? Another Void Ray. I mean, they don't have... Oh, they do have charge. I was going to say, they don't have charge or anything. It must have just finished. Is what it, mu it just must have done. All right, Voidray, kill all of these roaches. Do it. Kill all of the ro You want to kill the overlords, which is cool, I guess? Chadray, bullies, defenseless nerd. You're not even helping, Voidray. Come on, man. All right. Well, now you just chase all these dudes. Uh, the roaches really can't hold still. The Voidray will kill all of them. Or base racing, I guess. The roaches decide they can't do anything back home. They can't do anything over here either, really. Not with another Void Ray on the way. Natural base down. Spore Crawler kind of trying to get up here. But the Zealots will make quick work of that as well. Oh, the Roaches did come home. Why would you come home, guys? Ugh. That prismatic alignment. Uh, plus six damage versus armored units, which gives it um 12 damage. 0.36 weapon speed. That's real good, you guys. Void Ray really good against armored stuff. This Zealot has 8 kills. What a monster. Oh my gosh. 10 kills on that dude? Alright, this Zealot's another hero for Ellie. He likes his Zealots, man. There it is, boys. Says <laughs> Duddles. <laughs> Can I play Fatty after this anyway? Sure. Good game. Ellie with the all kill. Against formless bear sloths in one of the more impressive displays in a clan war of all time. Just start to finish crushing Protoss, Terran, and Zerg opponents. I think we do have one more game after this, which I, I guess it's going to be Fat Man versus Duddles, but I'm not convinced. We'll see. We'll see what it is. Uh, but yeah, that was amazing. What a display from Ellie Korn. It wasn't the highest level stuff from anybody really, but his zealot... Uh, Zealot use was fantastic. Void rays when he needed them. Carriers when he needed them. Mortals. Storm making full use of the Protoss arsenal in getting that win. Holding against Bailing Busts. I just... Incredible stuff. All right. Final game of today's Sunday series. A bonus one coming at you. We'll be right back. Final match of today's Sunday series will be a bonus game between Duddles and Fat Man. Here on Dreamcatcher, the latter edition. All right. 
in honor of FXB, says Duddles, and try to win this thing. Bottom right-hand corner, Pulpa Protoss player, it is Fat Man. And top left-hand corner, it is the Orange Zerg player, Duddles. All right, so Fat Man does have a YouTube, or YouTube channel, Twitch stream channel. There's a link in the description. Really fun Protoss player. He's been dabbling in Zerg a little bit, playing some Overwatch 2. Just a great guy. Very handsome man. Nice facial hair, I have noticed. People do enjoy the Fat Man beard. Anyway, am I the only foul pal that's left besides Fatty, says Alchemy? Maybe. Maybe you are. Nobody else got to play. They'd hang around the clan war while Ellie beat up on everybody. That's not a good time. I was actually supposed to participate, but then it turned out that I had to cast for the gauntlet. And as a result, uh, I didn't. But it's a good thing I didn't show up anyway, because it didn't matter. Ellie just crushed everything. Drath and Elk left. Oh, Drath didn't even play. Drath is probably the best player in the Foul Pal clan. He is Diamond 2, I believe, with all three races. Which goes to show the average ability of the Foul Pal clan. But still, that's pretty darn impressive. To be that high on all three races means you play a lot and you play well. Hatch first here out of Duddles into an Extractor into a pool. So pretty standard play, but again, it can be fairly cheesy. Fat Man, is he gonna, he's gonna go one gate expand as is tradition here. Against Zerg, he saw no early pool. He saw no reason to go for a double gate opening, as we saw from Ellie in the previous game. So let's see the response. I've actually played against Fat Man on this map, and he ended up cannoning out my main, and then cannoning out my attempt at a third. I tried to knight as him, but then he shut that down, and then he won. It was uh, very cheesy. Very cheesy indeed. A drone comes in, sees Cybernetics Core on the way, sees Nexus on the way here too, says, All right, I can take a third base. Hey, Duddles! You could be very safe taking a third base right now. I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out. About the two-minute mark. If this Nexus isn't even done yet, there's no way anything can kill you except for Zealots. But you can hold those off with Queens and Lings. No big deal. Why am I a ref, Fatty? Says Alchemy. I don't know, dude. You're observing. I don't have answers for you here. Not that you're asking me necessarily anyway. There's a Forge. So we are going to try to wall off, is what this says. This late Forge says no cannon rush, but it is going to be a wall-off attempt in case Duddles tries to... Uh, Bailing bust, as he did previously. Is he his rally broken? He doesn't have a rally. All right. Duddles, rally it up, dude. Rally it right up. Oh, the proxy hatch. What is with proxy hatching Fat Man these days? Apparently, it is in vogue. Well, Zealot hacking away. Probe hacking away. There's the cancel. Yeah, you can't just throw it up in the middle of the, the room. Dude, third base here. You have the money for it, Duddles. Come on, man. Either you have to kill Fat Man fast, or you die. That is what we're looking at here. Two base versus two base. Fat Man able to do whatever he wants at this stage of the game. He is walled off. He's got a cannon. He's got adepts here too. He's not bothering Duddles either, which would normally be good. But Duddles is not taking advantage of this. He is not going for a third base. He is going for a Roach Warren. Which is some early Roaches... Could be problematic here. Some Raviders especially could be pretty problematic for Fat Man. Twilight Council on the way. We've got an Overlord scouting up here. Checking out this natural base a little bit. Can't really see much. Can't really see anything other than what the drone scouted, to be honest here. And yeah, Injects for Duddles could use some work, I think. There we go. There's an Inject. I'm feeling better already. So five Roaches on the way. Have I said how much I hate Roach? I really don't like roaches. I would much, much rather win my games with Ling Bling Muta. If I have to get up into the mid or the late game. Or Corruptor sometimes. Ling Bling Corruptor is actually really good against Terran. Uh, pretty fantastic against Liberators. Good against Medivacs. Not as fast, but sometimes it doesn't really matter for main engagements. Not as harassy either. But again, it doesn't matter. So here we go. It is 28 Harvesters to 31. Duddles is done making drones, man. He's done making drones. He's going to go ahead and throw out Roaches all the live long day. And Inject would be pretty fantastic here as well as here. So two base Roach Ling attack. No sign of a Baneling Nest. So just regular old Roach Ling. Where are you? There we go. There's the Ravager time. Okay. Ravager's going to be part of this play as well. Which is just so, so good. Overlord scouts in and sees an Immortal on the way. Or sees, well, a Robotics Facility hitting researching as well as the Twilight Council researching and says, all right, we're going to see Immortals, we're going to see Charge Lots. And actually, Roach Ravager, not bad in that situation if you have more Ravagers than Roaches. Also, some Ling's pretty good, too. So look at these big, beefy Ravagers. Roar. They are real big. Zergling comes in and says, hmm, Fat Man has proxy carriers. No, he doesn't. That'd be hilarious, though. Crocibile down on the cannon. Hitting it quite nicely, but that shield battery, though... 
Oh, that shield battery, though. Zealot down, Immortal on the high ground, just crushing these roaches from distance. Nice dodge, actually, on the Corrosive Bile. Oh my gosh, the Immortal! Okay, well, the cannon died. But so did seven roaches and seven lings. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Donald decides it's time to go home. It's a good hold. Good hold by the Fat Man. More Ravagers, I believe, is what the recipe for this is. This this rally to the front is kind of interesting. This mechanical lings are like, wait, what? Nope, sorry, going ho home. Nothing to do here. Actually, if you leave a ling out, you can see when the Protoss is moving out. And then you can you can be aware and make some units and stuff. 34 to 41 Harvesters. Fat Man has the lead. Still no third base out of Duddles. That was a bit of a two base all in. Ooh, sneakily trying to take a third in the top right at the gold base. Here on Ye Old Dreamcatcher. Evolution Chamber, Evolution Chamber. Overlords rallying down here where there are stalkers. It's not a good place to be, guys. Look at all these overlords coming on down. Ah, that's why you need to be careful with your overlords when you're making them. And either when they pop out, rally them somewhere else, or choose their eggs when you make them and rally them somewhere else. I like to just rally them inside the main and then move them out later most of the time. Guttles is supply blocked quite heavily. He's making roaches, which versus two immortals. Where's the you? Four kills on that immortal. Where's the hero immortal? Where is that guy? Was that him? That was him, I think. It was the dude. The four kill immortal killing four roaches in that attack was just... It was too much. Did you... Yeah, these overlords heading this way are a bit of a tell. Tiny, tiny bit of a tell here. Another supply block. All right, overlords. It was nice knowing ya. Six of them have been killed in the first seven minutes of this game. That's bonkers. All right, so Roach Ravager Ling... Gonna try to make this thing happen against this attack from Fat Man. He's got a warp prism though. He's gonna warp in at the front. He's got a third base here too. He is not all inning here. He does have charge. He does have plus one attack. If these immortals can deal with the roaches, I oh the charge lots alone are a huge problem. Hey, no third base to kill. What is this shenaniganry? This will be really easy, says the Fat Man. I don't know, man. Ling's trying to kind of wrap around the immortals. There we go. If we can take the immortals down. Prosopile's getting some decent hits there, and now... Okay, so keeping the Immortals alive here. Zealot's right on top of this army. That is a lot of Zerg blood on the ground. Another huge warp in of Zealot. God, I hate charge lots so much. They are so good. They are so hard to kill, and they hit so hard. And that's it. That's going to be all she wrote. 87 to 51 supply. It is three base to kind of three base. Lings of... I mean, panic wings. <laughs> I don't like it, says Duddles. Trumpet's advice. What's Trumpet's advice? Trumpet's advice was to go for a Roach Ravager thing. Good game, says the Duddles. Duddles is out. Fat Man's victorious. And we do have the Fat Man continuing the streak against former formless bear sloths, winning at 6-0 for the day. Wow. All right. Uh, formless bear sloths. We really got to... We gotta do this again sometime. Maybe after we nerf Ellie. Maybe that's something we could do. Did you warp anything in? I don't think you did. Could have though. Not that it was necessary, but it was fun. And we'll do it again sometime. That was fun. And maybe I will actually participate. All right. So that is gonna be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II: Legacy of the Void, your Sunday series. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.